Tri-Cities Community Television presents coverage of the Port Moody Commemorative Council Meeting that was originally held in Port Moody on April 7th, 1913. Again, thank you all for taking time this weekend to join us in celebrating the milestone in Port Moody's history. And I would like to now introduce you to Port Moody's Mayor and Council. Firstly, Mayor Perry D. Rowe, played by Mayor Mike Clay. <laughs> Alderman Arthur Bernard White, played by Councillor Diana Dilworth. <laughs> Alderman Montague Robert Otley, played by Councillor Rosemary Small. <laughs> Alderman John Murray, played by Councillor Rick Blumack. <laughs> Alderman J. William McNeese, played by Councillor Zoe Royer. <laughs> Alderman W. D. McKay, played by former Mayor John Northey. Alderman J. M. McLean, played by Councillor Bob Elliott. <laughs> Alderman M. R. Britton, played by former Mayor and Freedom of the City recipient David Driscoll. <laughs> and Alderman James A. Clark, played by Councillor Jerry Nuttall. Um, I would also like to recognize some special guests, and I respectfully ask that you hold your applause for this next round until the end, uh, just to assist us in moving in along the proceedings expeditiously. I would like to begin with special guest, a guest, Mayor Greg Moore from Port Coquitlam, as City Clerk William Johnson Ferguson. We'd also like to recognize and thank our sponsors, Heritage Canada and Andrew Peller Limited, for their support. I see special guests, Dr. David and Donna Spence, as Colonel Moody and wife Mary. And I would also like to welcome the following VIPs um, as follows. Uh, Mr. James Moore, MP, Port Moody, Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam. Mr. Kirk Saggy, Andrew Peller Limited. Acting Mayor Carissa Bell, District of Maple Ridge. Councillor Mike Forrest, City of Port Coquitlam. Mrs. Suzanne Hulbert, Freedom in the City. Mr. and Mrs. L. and Nellie Sholin, Freedom in the City. Mayor Richard Stewart, City of Coquitlam. MLA Joe Trazzolini, Port Moody, Coquitlam. Mayor Deb Walters, City of Pet Meadows. Councillor Dean Washington, City of Port Coquitlam. Mr. Keith Watkins, School District 43, School Trustee. Mayor Heather Anderson, Village of Anmore. MP Finn Donnelly, Westminster, Coquitlam, Port Moody. And Dr. Elaine Golds, Freedom of the City. So thank you, thank you very much for all of you. Thank you. thank you, Your Worship. I would like to turn over the proceedings to you. Um, thank you, sir. And uh, our first order of business, of course, uh, we need to appoint a acting clerk. Uh, so before we can move on with the meeting, I would uh, make the following motion that uh, GL Churchard, the acting clerk, until the official clerk be appointed. Second. I'll second that, Your Worship. And I would like to call the question of counsel, then all those in favor. Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Seeing none, JL Churchard, we appoint you as the acting clerk until the conclusion of the election later. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, now, our first order of business, and this is such an exciting time for us in Port Moody as we finally have realized our dream of becoming a city. but. It's not just the fun part. We have the serious business of council. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, I feel that at this first meeting of council of the newly organized city of Port Moody, I will take the liberty of presenting what I consider the main points to be covered during the present year. It's our privilege to lay the foundations, and we must be careful that the succeeding councils do not find it necessary to undo any of our work. <laughs> touch that one. Uh, there's a large amount of work I would like to see done and I request that the money involved is such that at present borrowing is both difficult and costly. And this condition will probably not exist next year when it will be a lot easier for us to get money. And uh, in the meantime we can organize and be prepared to do the work in an efficient manner. Streets and sidewalks. I believe that all work on streets and sidewalks except temporary repairs should be done under local improvement plans and that you should pass local improvement general bylaw at as early a date as possible. I believe by adopting the above principle, 
our general tax rate need not exceed 10 mils. A low value of taxation will be attractive to manufacturers, home builders, and investors alike. Exemptions from taxation of improvements, I believe that a bylaw should be submitted at an early date exempting ordinary improvements from taxation. For water supply, it is imperative that this question be taken up at once and the source from which we are to draw our supply be determined so that we complete our systems as early as possible. Fire protection. Until the completion of our water system, I would suggest that we investigate the question of chemical engines and the organization of an efficient fire brigade. For our city offices, accommodations will have to be provided for the city clerk, engineer, council chamber, and a lockup. In regard to a hall, such as has been suggested, suitable for holding public meetings, I will say that I believe that when, this, that when completed, should be separate from the city offices. Streetlights, I believe a number of streetlights should be installed, and an effort made to secure a lower rate for domestic use. Revenue. It's quite evident that the limited amount of revenue available this year will little more than cover the expenses of the necessary staff and ordinary repairs, and it would be necessary to borrow in order to proceed with new work. This subject will require serious consideration. And regarding new subdivisions, I would recommend that before plans for subdivisions be accepted, that all streets be rough graded and the timber slashed and burned. That uh, was Mayor Rowe's inaugural council address of 1913. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I did, uh, in, in my haste of, of listing the names of VIPs, I did miss uh, Mayor Ralph Keith from Belcaris, so my apologies. I recognize you here. The city has initiated a process to fill a position of city clerk, and the incorporation committee has submitted a report on the clerkship with the following recommendation, which I shall read. The incorporation committee recommend the following applications be received for the position of clerk. G.B. Taylor, W.G. Ferguson, H.R. McKenzie, Thomas Shepard, W.B. Bauer, and that the whole of the correspondence relating to the applications be turned over to Council of the City of Port Moody with a special recommendation of the above applicants. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Is there discussion from Council? Well, I think five is too many to consider at first. I think we should look at shortlisting candidates. And Your Worship, I'd like to say, I don't see any woman's name down here. Is, there, is there, this going to create a problem later on? I concur. I sure hope that in the future there will be more women deciding to enter the workforce with so many of our men's brute strength required in the lumber mills and our factories. Don't you think that women should be considered for jobs like clerk of a municipality? But they can't vote yet. <laughs> Further discussion of council, well, or shall I, we... I would move that all names be eliminated except Mackenzie, Taylor, and Ferguson. Second. The motion is seconded. I'll call the question to eliminate all names except for the three noted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none opposed, we shall carry on uh, to ballot with the three names. Shall I get a motion that we proceed to ballot? I make that motion, Your Worship, that we proceed to ballot. Second. Very well. I'll call that question in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Thank you. Uh, I can city clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will uh, pass along the ballots, and I would like to remind the aldermen that they are to uh, make note of one name only on the ballot. Thank Sure. 
Van, Van Horn, I think. Well, we have an interesting result here. We don't have a clear winner on our first ballot. I have uh, Ferguson with four votes, Taylor with three, and Mackenzie with one. So per our procedure, I take leave of counsel that we would eliminate uh, Taylor and have a further ballot with just, uh, or sorry, I'm sorry, eliminate Mackenzie and have a further ballot with just Ferguson and Taylor. Are you eliminating Mackenzie, Your Worship, or simply the ballot? <laughs> and I would like clarification for that also, you wish. I, I shall suggest then that we eliminate the, uh, eliminate Mackenzie from the ballot. <laughs> we proceed uh, to second ballot with a uh, choice of Taylor or Ferguson. So on our second ballot counting, I have Taylor, Taylor, oh, Taylor, 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 and Ferguson. Congratulations, Mr. Ferguson. I now appoint you the new city clerk for the city <laughs> Shall I have a prompt motion of council that we destroy the ballots? <laughs> Just as a uh, point of interest, uh, as Clerk Ferguson that uh, makes his way to the frontier, uh, I'd like to share some interesting history on the decision. On April 16th, 1913, the city received a letter from H.R. and Mackenzie, as you recall, received one vote in the first round and no votes in the second round. Mackenzie claimed that an injustice was done to him on the balloting and provided a copy of the declaration of three of the aldermen. Uh, which basically uh, spoke to their votes on the balloting. So in response, uh, City Council struck a committee that uh, was appointed to investigate the situation and take steps to clear up the matter. And uh, however, in the end, there was actually no change in the clerkship. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Because of course, everything was done on the up and up. <laughs> The, uh, now, before we uh, move into the general uh, bylaw discussions of council, I have to say I was uh, enjoying some uh, beverages with some residents in the Burrard uh, Hotel last Wednesday night, and uh, some of them said they were finding it difficult uh, on their way, to making their way home from the, from the Burrard because the trains were causing issues at these crossings that we have. I, I promised the residents that I would bring their concerns to council, and, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that council probably uh, shares their concerns, but uh, perhaps uh, council has some, some input. Uh, Councillor, please. Your Worship, it's really important that we deal with this issue, the safety issue regarding CP Rail. Our trains carry mainly timber destined for eastern Canada, but it's entirely possible that in the future we will be loading ships for perhaps bound for India or even China. Impossible to envision right now, but who knows what kind of hazardous goods Alberta Premier Arthur Sifton will want to ship through Port Moody in the future. So your worship, it is with a great deal of consideration for the safety of our families that our children and our children that I support this, that we really address this issue on safety issues. Here, here. <laughs> Councillor Alderman McNeese and, and your vivid dreams of a ship that goes to China carrying cargo. 
Um, <laughs> well, Alderman Clark, I'm sure you'll bring some sensibility to this discussion. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I don't know about the CPR trains and what they're bringing through, but the problem with the crossing is that there are no planks. So when the tires go over the crossings, they go over the rails and bang down and could get stuck when a train comes. That is the essential problem with the uh, crossing. So I'm going to make a motion that the uh, clerk be instructed to write to the CPR drawing their attention to the dangerous and unsafe crossings of Kyle, Queens, and Moody Streets the sidewalks and roadways being unplanked across the tracks and other defects. Very good, Alderman, is there a I'll second? I'll second that, uh, Your Worship, realizing that unless we look after this now, we're going to be dealing with it for the next hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> Your Worship. Alderman. Railway companies should be held to the highest standard when it comes to the maintenance of railway tracks and crossings. I sincerely hope this council will support this motion. Very well. Is there further conversation on council? Just have uh, one comment, if I may, Your Worship. The, uh, the location at which you were getting citizen input uh, may have contributed to uh, <laughs> uh, the, the nature of the complaint. Uh, my concern in coming here today is that we seem to have some members of our community that are using the footpaths for horses. Um, I very nearly, indeed, did step in something. And I'm wondering whether that's occurring on the railway crossings as well. And we might uh, encourage people to be either using the horses at the side or your friends who are imbibing to be careful where they step. <laughs> uh, I, I think you probably good, will good point, to Alderman. I'm sure our <laughs> clerk can address that issue as well in their report. Uh, Alderman um, McClain. Yes, I would like to just expound on that. It's a slippery issue, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think we shouldn't go there at the moment. So I will be supporting the motion. Uh, Alderman McLean chooses to tread uh, carefully. Yes. <laughs> So Watch perhaps you we could revisit that at a future meeting. I'm, I'm happy with your direction. We will, we will take the uh, motion that has been moved and seconded, and I shall call the vote of council. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And seeing none opposed, uh, unanimously carry that motion. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your vote of confidence, council. <laughs> <laughs> Next item is the bylaw to borrow, which was actually debated on April 16th, 1913. Very well, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Alderman Murray. Well, thank you, Mr. Rowe. Now, I've been given due consideration to uh, the previous item on the agenda, and I think we should utilize this $10,000 to build ourselves a bridge. A uh, twirly whirly bridge uh, goes up and over and then under. And uh, people, I believe, will come from miles away just to drive across this bridge and safely cross the railroad tracks and won't have to worry about the planks and all that. It's just a, and, uh, in fact, I think we should put a, a train station in the middle of this whirly twirly bridge. <laughs> Uh, uh, Alderman Murray, you're clearly from the western end of Port Moody. I am. <laughs> As such, we understand your opinions. Uh, I wonder if any other member of council has a uh, matter uh, of consideration. Alderman McLean. Um, I happen to be from the east side of Port Moody, and we don't have this problem, Your Worship. Uh, maybe perhaps because we live in a little better area of Port Moody than the west side. And I, I truly get tired of the west side. Um, dictating to the eastern section of Port Moody. They seem to want more and more, and the east side is paying more and more for them. So I probably will not be supporting this uh, motion uh, from uh, Alderman Murray. Well, Alderman McLean, we know in the future that neighborhoods won't be competing with each other for tax dollars as, as we're having <laughs> today. <laughs> These problems will be long behind us when we do yes. this one borrowing bylaw and never have to borrow money again. <laughs> Uh, Alderman White. Uh, uh, until we have such time as secured revenue coming in, I think it is absolutely crucial that we borrow money. I campaigned on a 
platform of, of saving money where possible with a volunteer fire department, but I also campaigned on a platform of taxing appropriately wild lands and businesses. When I look at the success of the BC oil refinery and the success of the Thurston and Flavel sawmill, I fully believe that they should be contributing higher taxes to help support the creation of a new and prosperous Port Moody. Excellent points, Alderman. Is there a motion of council that uh, we'd like to consider? I would move first reading of the bylaw that's before us. Second. In Sorry, Alderman. Otherwise, people will keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, motion is moved and seconded then that the uh, leave to be granted to introduce a bylaw to borrow $10,000 from the Royal Bank. Seeing no further discussion, I shall call the question of those in favor. Aye. Aye. And are there any opposed? I'm opposed, Your Worship. Alderman McLean from the east side of Portland. Yes. Is opposed, <laughs> to the, opposed to the borrowing. <laughs> um, Mr. Clerk, I believe uh, the process now is uh, first reading of the bylaw. That is correct, and uh, I do want to make a note to the audience that subsequent reports uh, that eight directors of the Royal Bank were themselves preparing a form of loan bylaw. So this particular motion was held and considered at a later date and passed unanimously. I guess Alderman McLean had a change of heart at some point. Well, that was 100 years ago, and I've learned a lot since then, Your Worship. So maybe I'll, I can be sweeted on later on. So. I, I thought it's because you moved. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman White. Uh, I should point out in the bylaw, it does indicate the, the significant cost of borrowing of 7% interest of this loan. Very well, then on first reading, I'd call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? Alderman McLean remains opposed. And we'll call the question then on uh, second reading. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Alderman McLean remains opposed. And I'm going to check when I get home tonight too, Your Worship, I'm sure, by <laughs> opposing this. Properly so. So uh, lastly, uh, we have need to consider a motion that the bylaw to borrow $10,000 be read a third time forthwith, and for that purpose that any vote to the contrary be suspended in as far as it relates to the same. So moved. Second. And any further discussion on council, I'll call that question then. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed? Alderman McLean is being his rebellious self. <laughs> opposed? Uh, Mr. Clerk. Thank you very much, Your Worship. The next item is presented to council about city accounts, and I will just review them for you. That Clark and Stru Stewart Company stationery, $35.05. Thomas Stationery Engineering Supplies, $22.83. Uh, W.J. Ferguson, that's me. 23 days of service as city clerk, $94.52. C.A. Mills, eight days, chief of police, $26.30. David and Leslie, 15 days service as city engineer, $150. Works yard payroll, 24.5 days at $3 a day. $24.50. Thank you, Mr. Clerk, for Council's consideration. $55 for stationary, Your Worship. What are we making, roads or paper? Do we have a place big enough to store it? Such pages. Or Alderman Clark. Alderman Clark. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, uh, I find that the uh, pay that we're giving to the city clerk, as opposed to our chief of police who's defending us, uh, outrageous, uh, the difference. Uh, we're looking at almost uh, four times as much as well. Uh, we are paying our city uh, chief of police less than we are putting out on stationery. So, <laughs> I'm... Uh, I'm a little appalled by that. Oh, also, uh, the engineers getting $150. What did they, did they do for that? They, they may have assisted with the tender for the stationery. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alderman McNeese. Your Worship, I see a lot of discrepancies in, this, uh, in our city accounts, and I question the wisdom of paying our chief of police $26.30 for eight days 
when we're paying our entire complement of City Works Yard a total of $24.50 for three times uh, the work, 24 days of work. I hope that this won't be a trend that afflicts future councils deliberating over these types of budgets. Your Worship. Alderman. As a good Scot, I just find these, these costs for salaries is just absolutely heinous. Heinous it is. I mean, we'd never, as the years go by, they may even want holidays. <laughs> and if they're sick, still get paid. Oh, oh, Alderman. Vacations too, with holidays. We must be careful here. We are very, it is a lot of money. Is there further uh, discussion on council? Alderman White. Uh, I'll continue in the same vein of thought. You know, where, where, do we, where do we end? We set a precedent now. You'll want a deputy city clerk and a deputy police chief. When, when will it end? We have to be very careful in the precedent for the salaries that we set today. I, I think council needs to be aware that in here, policing costs are far less than 10% of our overall expenses. And in the foreseeable future, I can't see them ever going above that amount for the city. <laughs> The, uh, and of course, our volunteer fire department will continue into, into probably the 23rd century without the need for uh, expensive equipment and, and, uh, and, and bodies there. So I think that the council maybe needs to uh, uh, step back and realize this is our first, uh, our first council meeting and these things will get far easier as, as the years come in the future. <laughs> And I can assure council that uh, the, the anomaly for the uh, city clerk's salary is, is completely uh, unassociated with any other activities of the clerk and council. <laughs> and uh, we shall not, or should not discuss that further. Uh, Alderman Otley. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, I'd like to point out once more that we are spending far more on stationery than we are paying chief of police. There's something wrong with this. And I don't understand how much we can be paying for stationery. $35, $22, but we pay the chief of police 26 What on earth did we do with the stationery, Edith? We wrote to the chief of police. I, I, I believe uh, Alderman Clark was uh, very studious in his uh, committee that he formed on the use of stationery and the Clark and Stewart Company stationery bills. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we're 100% on the up and up, and, and there shall be no reason to question the alderman. And <laughs> Absolutely, Your Worship. There, there would be no uh, disconnect there. Anything further on the uh, statement? Oh, Alderman Murray. Well, just uh, to point out, uh, uh, our city clerk tends to use a lot of stationery, <laughs> so uh, I don't have any problem with that. Maybe in the future there will be a way to use less paper for... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's no Alderman White. Uh, I would move that the accounts be referred to the finance committee where they can be further debated in great deal and perhaps the actual invoices of the day being carefully, carefully evaluated and assessed. I would second that. Very well then, Alderman Clark. Um, Alderman White is saying that they uh, may be looking for invoices to be studied at the finance committee. <laughs> just, just say. <laughs> <laughs> So the motion is moved and seconded. I'll call the question of council. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? Seeing none, thank you, Alderman. And we will refer that to the Finance Committee.